Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. Spring has finally sprung here on the homestead and I say that with a little bit of trepidation because it's April and we can get plenty of snow in April still. But April means that chicks are coming. Uh, turkeys and chicks. We've got 30 meat birds for the spring batch and 30 turkeys for our Thanksgiving batch coming. And they're gonna be here soon so it's time to get the brooder ready. We use this shed that's on our property from the previous owners as our brooder building. Um, we don't really use it for anything else except some light duty storage and then chicks in the springtime. It's reasonably predator proofed. It's away from the house. So if it was to catch fire from a heat lamp or something, uh, we're safe, but we're afraid to open it. How dirty did we leave it last Might year? Might come running out. Um, the end of last year was not bad. bad. Oh, it looks like I had probably just cleaned it and then we moved them out. Oh, phew. It's really not bad here at all. It's just the decaying chipmunk. Remember, I didn't know how it got in here, but it was dead in here. Oh, yeah. Like, we had used to leave this open. So I think we had thought maybe a bird had swooped in here with it. Is that it? Oh. Well. Yeah, just want to sweep it out. Yeah. So we use brooders made of pretty much whatever plywood we can get. Uh, you cut a four foot by two foot piece. You cut these notches a couple inches in from either end and you can piece them together kind of like those dividers you used to have in elementary school that kept you from looking at your, your table mates tests when you were doing that sort of thing. They're not fancy. They're not pretty, um, but for us, on a small scale, they get the job done. And, uh, you know, they give us for for meat birds the three weeks we need, for turkeys obviously a little bit more. Uh, but they give us the time that we need to keep them in here, keep them warm, keep them healthy until we can bring them outside in the spring. We have a video on the channel where I show how to make these. I'll link it up in the corner for you. But really, they're not hard. They're, they're super simple. I mean, if you have, a, as long as you have a circular saw, and a way to get a sheet of plywood home, you can make these. Okay, the brooders are up. Uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of this style of brooder. I recognize it's not the most cottage core. Oh, look how pretty the brooders, the baby chicks. The same thing with the chicken coop. Moisture from their beaks, from their droppings, their breath, and the water in the coop is gonna all collect up near the highest point of the Um, Out there, you know, some people have metal stock tanks that they use. Um, we're down and dirty here. We're raising meat birds and we wanna do it effectively, we wanna do it humanely, but we also wanna do it cost effectively. Using the old lumber that I had kicking around to build these, um, they cost virtually nothing. To buy a new sheet of plywood, you know, you can get a sheet of plywood for 50 bucks. This is gonna give you more space at $50 than those fancy metal stock tanks that you get from like Tractor Supply or, or Tartar or some other company. Uh, those are gonna give you half the space for like 100, 20 bucks, something like that. So, you know, more than double the price, less space. These are super cost effective. Not only that, but at the end of the season, these break down, they go in a corner and that's it. You don't have to think about them. You just take them apart. So brooders are up. I still need to hang the brooder lamps in there. Brooder lamps still need to go up. Uh, we have a couple clean feeders and waterers in there but we've got, we're gonna need more. 
hold on, this is pain one handed. I'll come back to all that stuff though because I had something else I wanted to do today. I want to take that snowblower off of that tractor and put the loader back on. That's warm enough where those pallets that were frozen into the ground before can get moved. So I'll move these out of the way and then I'll be able to pull the tractor right in and grab that loader. I just noticed after I took the blower off that this manifold is leaking again. I haven't noticed it leaking all winter, but now that I disconnect the hydraulics, it's leaking. I just cleaned all the oil out of here a few minutes ago and it's already filled again. There's not even anything on it. That's a known issue with those BX manifolds. Um, a lot of dealers have actually replaced the parts with traditional Pioneer couplers. I don't know what the actual problem with it is and why they leak, but they do pretty frequently. That particular one has been on and off for years for us. loaders back on it was a little bit of a pain you guys saw that I was kind of struggling with it and there are a couple issues that kind of came up one is these arms right here were not exactly even and you can move them when the loaders not hooked up to the hydraulics but if they're not exactly even then the arms are not going to go into the pockets at the same time which can cause an issue the second thing was that one side of the bucket was a little bit higher than the other so when i went to lift the front end of the tractor up one side was going in before the other which was causing the other side to pop out so what i actually ended up having to do was throw a log under one of the rear tires and when the tractor went forward it kind of tilted the whole thing in not optimal i'm 99.9 percent .9 sure the loader is on and secured i guess we won't know if it's off until it's off but for now it's on these swift hatch loaders as nice as they are uh, unless you have a perfectly level surface they're kind of a it, it's a it's kind of a crapshoot about how easy it's going to be to get it back on it's always almost always easy to take them off even if you're on an unlevel surface but if you try to put it back on that's when things are going to get tricky for you if we end up with a whole bunch of snow in the next couple weeks blame me because i was on the fence about swapping snowblower out for bucket but i've got too much stuff going on i've got to pull the fence down there i've, I've got all sorts of other chores it's a little bit earlier than when I would do it. I would try to usually wait until the tail end of April, but uh, not happening this year. I wanna say thanks before this video ends to all the support from our Patreon members. Your quarterly gift packages are gonna be going out this week. We've got some fun stuff in there. A gift that's not necessarily from the homestead this quarter because of all the things we've had going on and new baby, uh, but I did outsource it to some good friends of mine. You'll see that in there. And you'll also see a fun little surprise that is going to be a Patreon exclusive. You're not able to get it anywhere else right now. 
Otherwise, as always, I do thank you for watching and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.